The United States Embassy Public Affairs Section on Wednesday supported its second youth dialogue meeting in Zimbabwe's oldest town, Mashingo. Your Excellency, we are taking this opportunity to welcome you to the city of Mashingo. I think you may be advised that this is the country's oldest urban settlement, which also boasts of hosting the national shrine to which the country derives its name. The embassy partnered with the regional community newspaper, The Mirror, to host the event which brought together nearly 60 youth from diverse groups, including civil society organizations, political parties, businesses and youth groups. As a newspaper, <coughs> we strongly feel that it is not enough to continue feeding our audience with the same dosage of news without organizing events like this one, where people speak for themselves. The topic today is the role of youth in rebuilding Zimbabwe. The Dialogue in Mashingo is the second such event supported by the United States Embassy as part of ongoing engagement with young Africans that began in August 2010 with President Obama's forum with young African leaders in Washington, D.C. And through this outreach uh, to young African leaders, what we're trying to do is to emphasize the Obama administration's priority of mutual responsibility as the foundation of the U.S.-Africa partnership. The U.S. is committed to supporting African solutions to Africa's challenges and to helping build networks between young American and Zimbabwean leaders that will lead to lasting partnerships. The panelists were unanimous in condemning the use of youth to perpetrate violence and periods leading to key political events such as elections. We must start by spiritual reformation in order to achieve a developing Zimbabwe. Today the church is saying to the youth, let's shun violence and build Zimbabwe. <coughs> Think of your education, your career and your future. So the politicians use their purse of money to influence the youths who have the purse of speed to be involved. <laughs> to be involved in dirty politics, for example, political violence for their own benefit. Again, those who are uh, nationally conscious should be able again to be tolerant of divergent political views. So if we have uh, the youth that is not a youth that is not tolerant to divergent uh, political views, it's an evil omen for democracy. Democracy cannot develop. From an academic perspective, I think to achieve this, uh, we need to come up with a curriculum that, uh, that is capable of transforming the mindset of the youth that is capable of uh, transforming the mindset of the youth uh, so that we can move away from being uh, showgoers whereby we complain of everything that is going wrong without maybe participating in effecting uh, the kind of transformation that we expect in our societies. And also I would like to say uh, to the female students, it is our youth. Whenever we leave it for the men, they will never ever think of us. They will just think of us whenever they feel like you know, they've got some other things that are less challenging. But the root things has to be done by them in our absence. The dialogue session was attended by nearly 60 youth representatives and witnessed by U.S. Ambassador Charles Ray, Mashingo Mayor Femias Chakabuda, and Mashingo Urban Legislator Tungai Matutu. Audience members questioned Zimbabwe's national youth policy, which they blamed for the marginalization of their participation in decision making, as well as encouraging the culture of violence and political processes, including elections. So, really, I think uh, it's more of an observation that uh, I think our government is more to blame on this uh, violence that is uh, occurring in our, in our country, that happened in our previous elections. Uh, what is permanent is the youth. Being a politician is temporary. And we must be able as youth to see through 
the men and women who want to be what they want to be in parliament. Now, our problem, the cancer is we have no direction. We have no values as a people, as youth. We are like the hornbill bed that follows the direction of the wind. Matutu is also the Deputy Minister of Youth Indigenization and Empowerment and was at the receiving end of a lot of questions from the youth audience. Hola, Dr. Matutu. You as the Minister of Youth in Government, what would you say is opposition in trying to improve the vision of the youth so that they be able to attain that they wish for? Thank you. You have been encouraging you to, to shun violence, uh, but uh, we are getting reports from the media that uh, your ministry is uh, apparently resuscitating uh, those uh, youth militia, uh, those youth service, national youth service uh, militias, the border cases. Uh, Deputy Minister, uh, your ministry is advocating for uh, indigenization. Uh, I think. Uh, can we say that uh, we, are no, we are not going forward but going backwards in terms of uh, development when we, we, we just go into a company and ask for 51 percent? Why can't you just start your own companies? Any other issues? I just wanted to find out from you uh, the issue about um, the loans that are given to the youth. Uh, we understand that uh, there have been allegations or reports of partisanship uh, with people claiming that uh, only youths that are aligned to ZANU-PF are benefiting from uh, such a facility. Since you are representing youth in that ministry, do you sit with uh, youth organizations to get the concerns that really matter for youth? Or you just sit the two of you Square and you and come up with policies <laughs> for the youth. Are they relate. Okay. Do they actually are they youth? We want the definition. We see youth office being run by uh, very old people who don't appreciate <laughs> who don't appreciate the cause of the youth. If you really look, this comes to the issue of violence. People really believe that politicians really use youth in order to commit violence. But this is exactly why I have challenged all the media houses here expose such politicians. Because what has happened is that people will simply say politicians are violent. But we have not gone on to say, look, this is the person. This is how violent it is. He is. Of course, we may say, Matutu appeared in court, beat a chief. That, I'm not violent. I've met him. Some of us are real men of peace. We really would want to see peace prevail. It is quite very critical. I agree with you. Because it's most critical, especially for the youth to, to say, look, what, are, what do we really want to achieve? But it's also critical for the leadership to also have a vision. But what I have actually learned of the few months that are in government is that government always comes up with uh, plans that are 5, 20, 10 years ahead. And normally you leave government before you even achieve any of them. I was looking at the strategic plan for our ministry when I joined it. It's so fantastic. It's so lovely. It's, I think there were higher consultants to come up with the strategic plans. But in terms of implementation, there's really nothing that is on the ground. Maybe first of all, I would want to say from a government's point of view, there is nothing like the resuscitation of the, uh, the youth militias. What actually has been happening is that with the inception of the inclusive government, we then suspended the training of the National Youth Service officers, uh, popularly known as the border gazes. Matutu bemoaned the lack of coordination in youth policy, noting that despite the existence of a youth ministry, other ministries also have their own youth policies. However, he defended government's indigenization policy, noting that it was in the implementation that there were divergent viewpoints. Let me start by saying from a government point of view, the concept of indigenization is not bad, but what is bad is actually the implementation part of it. Issues of loans, well, uh, when I actually joined the ministry, I think it's about one million was being released 
and then 450,000 is the one that was actually distributed to various provinces for purposes of actually giving out loans. For the first time, the loans were distributed according to provinces. Initially, it was the loans were being accessed in Harare, but we actually distributed them to provinces with the view that each province should be able to utilize whatever has been allocated to it. The Zimbabwe Youth Council is the platform through which most youth associations actually uh, air their views. Even when we were actually uh, doing the uh, National Youth Policy Review, we were using the platform of the National uh, Zimbabwe Youth Council. Before I, I do the final thanks um, to note that one of the things that I found very interesting about all of your comments, and especially in the discussion after the remarks, was a general negative attitude towards politicians and governments. <laughs> and I would like to say that actually that is something that parallels the general public opinion in the United States. When surveys are done about what the general American public thinks about certain professions, Generally, two of the professions that are rated the lowest in public opinion are members of Congress and lawyers. <laughs> and generally, most members of Congress are lawyers. <laughs> so that, that is something that our countries have in common, or so it appears, at least uh, today. Uh, but one thing I would like to say is to actually um, make some positive comments about government and politics because they are so critically important that this is the way we structure and run our countries. It's the way that laws are passed, it's the way that things change, it's the way we move forward. See, this dialogue program is part of the youth engagement programs being run by all U.S. embassies throughout Africa during the months of May and June. We're extremely glad to have partnered with the Mirror newspaper to support this dialogue. And we hope very much that this partnership will continue. Uh, we would like to do more programs in Mashvingo and this entire area. And certainly the Mirror is an excellent partner in that. Uh, but we also would welcome ideas from other people here, young professionals, students, the university. Uh, we are keen to come back.